and up the next morning for breakfast. We always include breakfast in our tours and our hotels generally put on a wonderful buffet spread so you can have a nice big meal and relax, have coffee and juice, fruits, eggs, potatoes, bacon, all to get you ready for our city tour with a local guide who is going to take us around and tell us all about Montreal. Well, here in the province of Quebec, 80% of all the inhabitants are French speaking. In Montreal, are we 100% French? No, of course not. There are some English uh, people, English community, very important. In Montreal it, the city itself, we say that 65% of the people have French as their first language, mother tongue. 12% would have English. And what would be the 23% left? Every other language you can talk about, and think about. So we have, of course, Italian, we have Chinese, Japanese, Dutch, Deutsch, uh, whatever you want it to be. We speak about 60 different languages in Montreal. The largest community would be the Italians, close to 200,000 Italians in Montreal. And the largest French-speaking city outside of France. So no wonder that those people here speak French. When I get those youngsters from the States and during those school trips in April and May, you know, they all go like me uh, to me and say, Martin, why are all the TV channels in French and the writing in French? I say, you're in a French city, no wonder. It's like saying, why everything is in English in the States? Which in Vancouver, it's not even 1% of the people who speak French. Same thing in Toronto, not even 2%. So, because if you go to Vancouver, you have more chance of, be, or even Van uh, Toronto, you have more chance being understood in Chinese than in French. You have more Chinese people there than French. It's a bilingual city, not 100% bilingual. Of course, that would be utopic, a little bit impossible to imagine. We say that 50% of the people, one person out of two, can manage in both languages. And you know that those two languages are the official languages of Canada, of the country. Uh, in Quebec, while well, we are about 7 million people, which means that Montreal, with 3.4 in the greater area, represents about half of the population of the whole province. And in the country altogether, 30 million people. So the same population as in California, for example. Can you imagine? And California is so tiny compared to Canada. Same number. Why? Because you know everybody is living in the south for temperature reasons, of course. So we all live pretty much, we say 80% of the people live at 100 miles from the borders of the states, at less than 100 miles from the borders, the US borders. So which means that up north, it's almost empty. All right, no questions? Pretty clear? All right. So uh, we have up until 12 this morning to do this tour. So we're going to have plenty of time to show you the main points of interest in Montreal. Good. Now we're going to start to point out some things in Montreal. The first thing I would like to point out, of course, is the hotel where you were staying, the Queenie, Le Reine Elizabeth, nothing, nothing less. Very nice hotel, the largest one we have in Montreal, 1,000 rooms. Now to the left, you got to see a very big church. Actually, it is the Catholic Cathedral of Montreal. And actually, this cathedral here that we have is a replica of St. Peter in Rome. One third is the scale, so we send the architect to Rome to study it and to build something very similar right here in Montreal. Let's talk about the winter. We get an average every year, every winter, of 7, 7.5 feet of snow. <laughs> We're not Eskimos here, but the average temperature during the day, 11 degrees, 11 Fahrenheit, so it's not that bad. And you know, it's really dry here, it's not humid. If you've been to Europe during the winter, it can be much warmer than 11 here, but colder. You feel much colder there than here at 11. Why? Because it's very humid over there. Here it's really dry during the, the winter. So when you have the right clothes, well, it's all right. It's perfect. We have 26 bridges around the island of Montreal, so very practical, of course, for islanders like us. So we now go up Jacques Cartier Bridge. Now we're leaving, we're leaving the island of Montreal to uh, get to another island, one of the many islands around Montreal. As I said, we're part of an archipelago. 
and it's called St. Helen Island. And from here you're going to have a very nice um, skyline. Then you do have the modern city with the skyscrapers. And I'm going to show you something very weird, very queer. <laughs> it's called Habitat 67. It's to your left. Uh, 354 cubes. The architect, Mr. Moshe Savzi, wanted to uh, represent life in the city but feeling like in the countryside. They are prefabbed and uh, your apartment is made out of one, two, three, four or five cubes. And it costs a lot of money. Actually, it was his, that was his thesis from studying at McGill University. We're trying to get people to come back in old Montreal. 30 years ago, we had maybe 200 people living in Old Montreal. Today, over 2,500 people. But we want five, six, seven thousand. We really want people to come back here. That it's not too expensive to rent an apartment in Montreal. So that would mean like a three and a half for a bachelor, for example, would be about four hundred dollars, and then a four and a half would be like five hundred dollars per month. Canadian dollars, of course, we're still in Canada. Now to the right we have the science center. So on the left, the Marché Bon Secours, bon Secours Market. It's a market um, built in the mid 19th century. Very nice construction. Originally constructed as Montreal's first interior marketplace, it still functions like that today. For a while it was actually the parliament of the nation of Canada and the city hall of Montreal, but now it's still a great place to shop. But I'm going to show you, facing Notre Dame, the very first bank that was founded in Canada. It's called La Banque de Montréal, Montreal Bank. A very nice construction inspired from the Pantheon in uh, Rome. So a classical architecture. It's right here on the right with the very large columns. So this bank was founded in 1817. The construction, though, is from 1847. The finance was really concentrated on St. Jacques Street, St. James. Uh, you would find there all the banks. Uh, it lasted, as I said, up to 19, 1930, the crash. That's when it started moving west towards uh, Toronto. And Toronto is now, as you know, the economic center in this country. Uh, Royal Bank, when it opened in 1928, was not only the highest structure in Montreal, it was the highest structure in Canada and in the whole British Empire. 23 floors. Today we laugh at it, 23 floors, my god, we go much higher. But at the time in 1928, the highest structure in the British Empire. Big, it's big. Uh, the guy who did the interior, uh, Guido uh, Nanchiri, is the same artist who did the Supreme Court in Washington DC and the Mormon Temple in uh, Salt Lake City. Built to impress, this vast interior has a coffered ceiling. It's built in an Italian Renaissance Revival style. So theoretically, we just left the old Montreal. We have 25,000 Chinese living in Montreal, 45,000 in the greater area. And in the Chinatown itself, we may have 200 families, 300 people living there. So it's very small, but still, nevertheless, a very important cultural place for them to gather, not only Chinese, but Asian in general. So during the weekend you can see the Chinese and Japanese and you know Malaysian get back here along with the French Canadian and English Canadian of course. Really nice ambience. There is a subway station right in front but the big building over it in front of you to the left is the convention center. Uh, exhibitions are getting bigger and bigger so we had to enlarge the convention center and actually we're gonna double the surface and magically we're going to be right back where we started. So this is the end of the tour. I hope you've appreciated the three hours we spent together. Thanks a lot. It was very nice meeting you all this morning. And I'd like to say thank you, a warm thank you to uh, Robert, our driver. Did a wonderful job, Robert. Anytime, my friend. And I wish you a very pleasant stay in Montreal and a nice uh, trip up to Toronto. Hope you enjoyed that tour with the local guide.